He's just a good old boy who loves burning rubber and driving fast. Okay, it is not Pomona time yet. <laughs> Leave it to my boy Rick. Calls mid morning. Hey, what are you doing tomorrow? I'm like, I don't know. What am I doing tomorrow? He said, Hop on an airplane tonight. Come to Charlotte. And here I am. I'm at the airport. I'm going to Charlotte. What are we going to get into? Who knows? With Rick Ware, it could be anything. But you know this, I'm going to take you along for the ride. We're going to have fun doing it. Let's go. All right, I'm walking in the door here. And who meets me? Rick is right at the door waiting on me. Hello, hello. All right, Welcome. buddy. Some of the folks have taken this little quick tour before, but roam us around. Where are we at? You've got several different shops. So yes, just kinda... this is the shop uh, we base uh, Clay's top fuel car out of. We run our EMSA program out of it, and it's the home base for um, the motorcycles, the World Supercross, and technically the flat track, although uh, those guys are off on the road all the time, and typically uh, everything's gone in containers overseas. <laughs> but right now the Supercross stuff is uh, back here. Clay's car is back here after uh, Gainesville. We're getting it ready to head to Pomona. So we're just gonna cruise around. We got the big town here with us visiting here <laughs> in the Carolinas. So just uh, come oh, on and check it out. I always love walking in because you've got this so cool up here with all the all the different cars and stuff on the wall. And show me around. Show Say, me hi, around. Say hi, Maggie. Say hi, Maggie. <laughs> Look, I even know that guy back there. That's right. <laughs> come on. In. All right. So as soon as people walk in. Obviously the cool wall, but the first thing I see is the bicycles. What's up with the bicycles? Well, so that's a, that's an original 68. Um, it's all the little serial numbers and you know, anybody that was, uh, grew up in the sixties in California and really anywhere for that matter, uh, knows how cool it was to get the stingray with the rear slick and the Springer <laughs> front end. And so I had a shot to uh, get one of those things. Uh, the guy out in Pomona out in the West coast builds them and restores them. Yep. And, and, um, I got Clay's signature on it and John Forrest's signature, yeah. so it's pretty cool. So it was a little bit of nostalgia. It really is. And the guy that you bought this from, and I'm, man, I'm drawing a blank. He's a cool guy. So you got that at Pomona a year before last. And then Correct. last year, he brought this one for me, which was pretty cool. Love it. It is cool. And then what? what is that? So uh, this is uh, SoCal makes these. They're, you know, electric bicycles. Um, I got this from um, Surfer Jeff Deal. Yeah, he's tied with yeah. those guys, and uh, SoCal sponsored him. And uh, Jeff's just a you know great journeyman funny car guy. Oh, absolutely. I'd uh, love to try to do some more stuff with him in the future, and um, just uh, you know some cool stuff. Yep. And then we got an old cup car sitting here of Cody's. That's pretty cool. As soon as you come in. Yeah, it's one of the uh, the Gen Six cars, so they don't. Uh, uh, we had a lot of those and kind of they got converted and sold off and yep. stuff. So we kept that one because it had a fresh paint job. <laughs> it looks good sitting here. Yeah. So, uh, so as we walk around the corner, I see some dirt bikes here. Yeah, there's some of what uh, leftover we had. Uh, all the containers delivered back from the World Supercross uh, for 2023. We um, missed the championship uh, like we had in uh, 22. Uh, finished second, both 450 with Joey Savacci and... 250 uh, with uh, Shane McElrath, who's yep. uh, the reigning uh, champion. So we're just kind of getting ready and seeing what the next phase is there. And um, you know, we're gonna we're doing some testing here with uh, the flat track guys in South Carolina uh, with the 450 with um, Cody Cop, uh, Briar and Shana are testing. Man, I forget the name of the track somewhere in Florida. Uh, working on the twins and working on her uh, singles. So yep. um, we'll be seeing them sometime here on the way to the Georgia, I imagine, here this, this uh, next week. Yeah. So as y'all can see, this little area here is kind of set up for the bikes. And then as we rotate on around, it's what y'all are used to seeing on the channel here, the top fuel car. And I got to tell you, we didn't do that great at Gainesville, but I'm pretty dang excited about how the thing has been running, actually, though. 
It's running really quick. We uh, we made some mistakes as a team yep. um, on the car, so uh, I think we, we we know exactly what we did. Uh, yep. We're going to go back to what we were doing uh, at the pro shootout where we yep. had a pretty good weekend. Yes. So I'm looking forward to the West Coast Swing, you know, Pomona and Vegas and Phoenix, and uh, it's um, going to be fun, and it's going to be uh, really cool weather. Uh, track's going to probably have high grip. You're going to see a lot of big numbers. Yep. And that's a little bit there in between the uh, 330 foot and 660 mark where, where we kind of gave up a little bit last year. I think we learned some stuff with Jim on working with Nikki. Uh, so I'm excited. I'm excited to go back. Me too. So this is a really cool big old building here. And I love how you've got these walls. And we'll kind of walk back there and look around. But it's pretty neat how you got this set up here when we... When I first came here, I'm like, man, this place is nice, and it, and you keep it nice. That's one thing I will say about you that me and you are alike. I like everything <laughs> where it's supposed to be and clean. So, well, the walls help just uh, separate from some of the uh, what I quote, you know, dirty work. Yeah, working on yeah. clutches, tearing stuff down, things get yep. wrecked or blown up or whatever. Um, it, ironically, these are actually the walls that we, you would use uh, in a World Endurance or at Le Mans. Uh, these walls have been at Le Mans, unfortunately, not with me running, but. Um, uh, so we had them and we set them up. It's like, you know what? This is a perfect way to keep it clean, keep yeah. it contained. And then, um, you know, we'll show you some of the, the, the spares and junk in the back. Right, right. right. <laughs> and you got this set in here. So I got to see this at Daytona last year. Yeah, these things get crazy. The wheel going through tech and so that was your first 24 <laughs> yeah. hours. So <laughs> yeah. that was a great deal. And, um, yeah, we, we keep that in prep here. We ran the Acura out of here. Uh, the Acura GTD that we ran uh, two years ago, then the LMP uh, two this year, uh, and um, we're. Uh, it's a crazy. Know. These things are just crazy looking. I mean, it's just so weird. You can see, they're kind of modular, I guess you would say, where the nose and the rear comes off, and yep, it, essentially it cam locks. The whole nose cam locks to the front. The 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 back rear tail cam locks to the gearbox, and the gearbox bolts to the back of the chassis. Uh, it's a, the so so um, literally you have these studs here the whole motor bolts to those studs uh, these carbon bars here come back to the top of the transaxle and the transaxle uh, cam blocks to the back of all the rear diffuser all the rear tail um, so it's definitely modular from the standpoint it's all it's all stacking tolerances and it's what makes cars very light uh, makes them uh, pretty fragile when you hit them hard. You hit them <laughs> right, right, right. Because uh, it's hard not to, you know, uh, mess the next piece up. Right. So. Right. But that's all part of this kind of racing. And when we go around the corner here, we'll show you exactly how um, that rear gearbox kind of fits in here. The motors in this class, we actually have to lease from a spec source uh, called GibTech. Uh, it's a Gibson uh, V8, and uh, you you can't own them. You can only lease them. So if you're not running in an, uh, on a regular basis, you have to deliver the motor back. Wow. The problem is uh, your car can't roll. Right, so, <laughs> right, right. It's all part of the chassis. Now, you, you can build fixtures, so it is right. possible, but uh, we don't have that. Yeah. You know, one thing, oh, before we leave this car, I'm going to show everybody the seats here. The seat, which there's two of them sitting there, it is unbelievable how the drivers and my, what I'm thinking about Austin Sendrick drove when I was there and he's so tall. Yes. And yep. then you had like Eric Lux, he's a little shorter, you know, yeah. and they we were Devin able... DeFrancesco. Yep. Was. So um, we finished 10th uh, overall and fourth in 22. Uh, Cody was driving. He's six, four. Yep. Uh, Austin Sendrick was six, four. Uh, they're definitely difference in their height. Uh, Austin has a lot of length in his legs. Yep. Cody has a lot of length from uh, the, the waist up. Waist up. Yep. Um, but they're, when you get a seat in there, they're extremely claustrophobic, way more than you'd really think so. Um, I felt right at home in it. Well, yeah, you, you would. Because <laughs> I'm small. Yeah, but. you would. Well, that and used to being in a confined right, area, right. Um, in a confined space, the um, you, you sit with your butt lower than your feet, which is a bizarre uh, feeling, yep. but that's typical to, yep. to most uh, open wheel cars nowadays. Yep. Um, but... Uh, when you, when you close up, it's all shoulder in there. Yeah. And so it's definitely, uh, all these things are built really for jockeys. You know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's for sure. It's Christopher. Christopher. Our official, uh, you know, videographer <laughs> slash social media. Who yeah, has a real know. camera and not his iPhone like yeah, me right now? <laughs> <laughs> 
So we're getting into some of the supplies and things, but yet yeah. sitting amongst those supplies is an Indy car sitting here. Yep, that was our show car we used. That was um, actually a, the car, I think, is basically brand new. Uh, Panos uh, submitted a car years ago uh, for approval, and it never really... Uh, never really cut it so yep. we uh ended up getting i got that car from uh dale coin uh we we're partnered with in the 51 indy car uh, we used it as a show car we yep. used it for a couple of years um and it's been sitting this year because we don't um we don't have a plan for uh any sponsor shows it's still that. kind of cool just walk around the corner and there sets an indy car and over here is all the like I say, supplies, lots of CRC stuff, which uh, the top fuel car uses a lot of it. Man, lots of parts. Uh, yep. One thing is for sure, you know, we, in, in NASCAR, we run, you know, 38 times in 40 weekends. We're really busy. We consume a fair amount of parts. Uh, but I can tell you, in a five and a half foot area, we consume more parts than a top fuel car <laughs> than I think you could just about make. It's uh, pretty amazing. Uh, we don't tear too much up on the uh, the chassis and suspension side right. and body it's works. Just doggone. Motor parts. From clutch hat parts. To pan and, <laughs> and from uh, pump to clutch, it's like uh, everything needs to be on Zeus fast. Yes. It might as well be made out of crackers because they just <laughs> consume. And you're, you're rolling, but this has already got in in, uh, in our vision here. So Yeah, so that, uh, I had a 68 Camaro when I was in high school, and we used to street race uh, in Houston, um, Rankin Road down Westheimer for any old school Houston. <laughs> or as the kids say, y'all were in Mexico. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you weren't street racing, you were in Mexico. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, um, you know, and I got my butt handed to me you know, all the time, but uh, uh, I loved it and it's having affinity for 68, 67, 69. Yeah. So, um, my dream was to, to build up and get another um, car and, of course, do it like I'd like to do it. And, of course, that, now we got one. I never had a chance to drive it. Right, but we're about right. ready to do some more stuff to it. And, uh, but it's street legal. It's got headlights, taillights, blinkers, um, licensed. Uh, it's, it's a pretty wild wild ride and uh we'll be probably doing some more stuff in the future with that and sharing some more stuff for it it's uh it's carbureted right now but we're, we're about ready to convert it over to fuel injection with all hidden uh stuff within the um uh the, the bug catcher and it's gonna duplicate what it looks like in a top fuel car right. we, we have a dummy nitro barrel valve um we have a uh, funny car style um uh, big scoop uh, that's gonna be pretty cool that is cool and of course this thing made its way i guess it really made its debut at pri yeah, show here i show in yep. the summit booth summit booth it is a cool ride and it's a full tube chassis what it, is there a story on the chassis do you it's, know where it's, it, comes it used from? to be like a stick shift car yep and uh, it's um uh, steel roof steel quarters um but it's um uh it's you know basically been a a car that used to be a drag car that we converted. It's got street legal tires. Still <laughs> roof, still roof, still quarters. We could yep. put Jeff right in there. He'd be, it, it, he'd no, be ready to go. Uh, it's, a, it's a Jeff Lutz <laughs> special for sure. Um, and it's, uh, I just, uh, you know, sometimes during the, the summertime here in uh, Mooresville, there's a lot of um, car shows and yep. things that we're going to try to go hang out with in between because the weekends are yep. always pretty full. But, yeah, cars um, and coffee kind of thing would be cool to be rolling up in that. It's just loud and obnoxious. And, yeah. You know, it's just kind of, it's just cool. It's just cool. <laughs> and I was just talking to Austin about this stuff here, which is obviously the World Supercross stuff. This is stuff we, uh, we have four containers that we... Uh, you know, send all over the world, literally. Uh, we were in um, uh, Abu Dhabi and Australia uh, last. Um, so technically, you know, it, it's all based here out of Mooresville, but we package everything up and, and send it off, and it's gone for months on end, and it comes back. Um, same thing, you know, uh, even with the flat track stuff, we don't really come back to home base, so to speak, very often. Yeah. Uh, we stay out on the road. Uh, every once in a while we come back. But um, that, that, that's kind of... Uh, what we do here on top of we do based on marketing out of here my office is here yeah uh, robbie benton our president is here also but he spends probably more time than i do well for sure more time than i do uh at the uh, the cup shops uh we have about 18 20 000 square feet and that'll be something soon to do with with clay here yep. next uh, to go through a tour with that yep. that shop is really fantastic as well um but uh this is close to home and home base for us I think it's really cool. This is what me and Austin were talking about, how these bikes get packed. 
And Austin said two of them actually go in this this crate right here. Yep. That's that's crazy. Yeah, we uh, so we raised four bikes and we're only allowed one spare per. So basically, we have six bikes and a lot of spares, yep. a lot of plastic, um, because uh, last year the bikes left. I, mean, I want to say August, August I think something. Yeah, but it didn't come back until. Uh, after Thanksgiving. Wow. So you have to make sure you have enough stuff because dragging stuff on the planes to get overseas or shipping it, it's just, it's oh, a nightmare. Yeah. Um, you know, r racing like this and, and even, you know, with top fuel and anything, to me, racing is all about um, uh, management of time and you really feel like you're in a travel business. Yeah. You know, logistics. You, you, logistics constant. and travel. It, it's yeah. um, shipping, it's uh, hotels, it's rental cars, rental cars, it's the right amount. Uh, for the people showing up on the airplanes, which is always <laughs> yeah. an issue because some reason we're always short of a rental car, <laughs> yeah. hotels, check-ins and stuff. So a lot of, a lot of logistics to, yeah. to run an RWR. So I hear Austin over here pecking away. So he's over here putting the engine together. Y'all have seen that before, but what's interesting is something different that you've done that, that I'm used to. It actually kind of hold the whole top fuel world. We've got Dennis Borman right down the street and we do some assembly there, some here, and he does all of our repairs. And Yeah, one of the things, um, you know, when we got into this, everybody was shipping stuff off uh, to Indy or to the West Coast to get fixed. Um, you know, Morrisville has kind of become really the race hub of the world. You know, we have so many uh, Indy car, road race, drag race, and obviously stock car uh, centric um, people that can build, fabricate, carbon work, uh, metal welding etc <laughs> yeah. which, which is really important in, in the nitro ranks <laughs> yeah. um, your, your welding rod is probably your most uh, important tool to have yep. um, so I didn't want to have to be hostage to travel 8 hours all the time in a hurry uh, I didn't want to do as many fly in I wanted to build uh, everything here as much as possible service it here uh, bring people to move them here um, so there's less fly in it's worked out great Dennis Borm uh, has a pro motor uh, in Mooresville, and he, um, you know, he actually did a lot of work for um, DSR and those guys years ago, and did a lot of repairs for people in the industry. Yeah. Uh, people didn't even know it. Uh, Dennis has probably built hundreds and hundreds of NASCAR motors for us. He sat on the pole at the Daytona 500 as an engine builder. Um, his shop is just amazing. The amount of work that goes from midgets to blowing alcohol cars to to cut cars, Xfinity cars. Uh, so I wanted to get somebody that was an actual professional engine builder as opposed to an assembler um, to just go through a process of um, how we measure everything. Yeah. Because what we learned when I first took this over, uh, an example, we would torque main caps and get anywhere from 1.8 to 3 thousandths difference depending on how somebody cranked down and torque depending on the washer, depending on three different types of nuts that were used. Um, that was really just unacceptable. Now, in top fuel, there's a bigger leniency because the, 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 the concept is you kind of hurt stuff all the time anyway, right. but we can't hurt more uh, on purpose because of a lack of measurement. So yeah. we were able to um, dramatically change the amount of uh, bottom end failures due to just mismeasurement or uh, the way we assembled and, and disassembled. Yep, the process, basically. The process. Yep. So um, everything. So now we're going and having um, uh, you know professional pre-assembly done uh, on all of our bottom ends. Yeah. Once you're there, um, in the middle of the battle, when things go wrong, you're still going to have to go put together a lot of stuff. Yeah. But um, we're, we've had a lot of success here um, uh, doing it that way. So yep. I'm, I'm really happy. It is cool. It is cool. And then one thing we get into that is uh, always not the uh, not the shifter cart, clutch disc. Holy moly, dude! Man, that was the big education. You, you can't have enough. You can't <laughs> buy enough. You can't test enough. And uh, it's um, you, you see there is there is a jillion discs, but you go to to some of the other shops and this is their discard pile. So, right, right. Um, people live and die by disc. And some of the big teams that run four teams, they buy up batches. Oh, and, thousands. Um, it becomes uh, part of the, the biggest 
um, variable that we have to do uh, as far as measuring them, how we continue to measure them, how we surface them, how we grind them. And that's what we're doing right here. It is just um, a nonstop process and it's just part of the consistency. Whether we do it right or wrong or different than other people, what's important is to do it the same way on a regular basis. Um, so we at least have our own data to go on. Right. And so, um, and now that we got uh, Kingpin Nikki Bonifant over here, yep. um, uh, we're, we're doing things dramatically different <laughs> and a lot better. And so you put Jumo and Nikki together, uh, that's why we're hoping yep. to have a great year. And so you just said the last name Bonifant. So the clutch disc come from Bonifant. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> JR, you gotta you gotta grab him, grab him. <laughs> okay, all so right. Blaze he's been waiting patiently okay. for you. <laughs> still, right. still typing away over here. Uh, yep. Get, getting your magic mix. Sorry, I, I had to steal your superstar. I know, we gotta have <laughs> Hey, he's he's gotta do work. So basically, we got Rick for a little bit. That's hard to do, you know. It is. He stays so freaking busy. Matt. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Oh, so there is a quick loop around the shop, the drag race shop here. And I hope y'all enjoyed that. Appreciate you guys watching, liking, subscribing, sharing. Boom. See you in the next one.